Hey everybody and welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Today I'm going to do a uh, relatively quick book review. I'm looking at Keith Lammers' The Complete Bolo. Bolo, what does that mean? Some variation on YOLO? Are we talking about those ties that the uh, fancy people wore in the late 80s along with their mullets before... Uh, that became passe. No, we're talking about essentially a futuristic tank. A war machine with an artificial intelligence. Now these stories, and they are, this is a collection. Uh, there's some short stories and there's like a, a longer, oh, somewhat novel, novella involved here. Um, they're interesting for a few reasons. They're, they're ostensibly part of what you'd call military sci-fi, which is actually not something I'm super interested in. Um, aside from when I was a kid and, you know, I like just about anything sci-fi, I tend nowadays, I want to see something that has more to do, um, oh, with characters, with wisdom, with truth, than I am impressed with scientific gadgets or make-believe politics in a you know galaxy far far away um and so even though i was a big fan already of laumer's retief stories uh when i read about these i wasn't so sure that these were going to be my cup of tea um but i picked this up in a uh i believe in a thrift store yeah four dollars Four dollars, not bad, relatively thick book. Uh, just to try it out. And I was actually pretty happy with what I got. Now, the book is organized in a particular order. Or I should say the stories are organized in a particular order. And being who I am, I read them in a different order. Uh, because I wanted to read them um, more or less in the order they were written and published. Um, so I could sort of see, was there, um, were there changes in how he treated the subject over, over time. So let me go really quickly through, um, the stories that are included in this book. Um, I'm not going to go heavy into the plot of each one, especially the shorter stories, but what I'm going to do is talk a bit about, um, the themes and why you might want to take the time to read the book. Um, so it starts with um, it starts with a story called Combat Unit in 1960. Well, I should say it doesn't start with Combat Unit, um, but that's the earliest of the stories written. Uh, so written in 1960, um, Laumer, if memory serves, he 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 did time with the State Department, um, and and that figures heavily into the Retief stories because Retief is part of essentially like a, you know, interstellar um, uh, 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 state par department diplomacy um, in a sci-fi setting. Um, and you can get fr <laughs> from the stories that Laumer did not have the highest opinion of America's, um, of America's diplomats. And I believe before that he did serve in the military. Um, and that plays a part here. Combat unit again. We're talking about 1960. It's pretty interesting. It to me, it's a really good introduction into um, into what the bolos are. They they are artificially intelligent, and you would get from a lot of works on artificial intelligence the danger of that artificial intelligence. You don't really get that much from the Bolo stories. Because while they are artificially intelligent and capable of thinking through problems, they are programmed to be war machines, essentially to defend humanity, uh, to serve their country, so to speak. And they do. They do. Um, and this will get into, a, a, I think, a bigger theme when I get to that point of the review. And so in combat unit, what we have is um, 
a bolo that has all but been destroyed, sort of becoming aware in um, some kind of a, a, a demolition depot um, where he's supposed to be being dismantled. And so he becomes aware and comes back to life, so to speak. And you get a real sense not only of how these machines think, because it's written from the machine's point of view specifically, but you also get an idea of how powerful they are and what their capabilities are. And you do also get a sense of how um, mentally they can grow while still retaining the dedication to their mission. The second short story is called Courier. It's from 1961, and it is actually a Retief story. So if you've never read any of those, uh, you get a little sample here. The bolo in that story shows up towards the end uh, and is, I almost wonder if it was, if it was Laumer sort of just doing a little bit of a reference to another story without really, um, without really uh, writing a bolo story. The, the machine doesn't, you don't see anything from the machine's perspective. It really comes off as sort of a futuristic tank that um, is being operated by some people. Um, although one of the bigger overarching themes of these stories is present in that particular story. Uh, the next one is, let's see, The Night of the Trolls, which is an interesting novella. Um, it wasn't my favorite part of the book. It got a little bit more, it, it has to do with a man who wakes up from uh, suspended animation into an America that has obviously gone through something like a world war, or maybe a nuclear war um, to some degree. Everything that he knew is wrecked and kind of gone. And it's sort of this brave new world. Um, it has a little bit of a twist ending, which to me was pretty easily telegraphed. Um, it was more action oriented. And I didn't, it, I didn't find it that interesting, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it, decent, but not, but not great. Um, we then had The Last Command in 1966. Um, a Relic of War, 1969. And that rounds out the kind of the original Bolo pieces that are in this, the earlier ones. And then the second half of the book is taken up by Rogue Bolo from 1986. And you get some similarities in, in those three stories uh, and some similarities with the earlier involving bolos that have been kind of out of commission for an extended period of time uh, coming back to life and um, to the best of their ability doing their duty. And I, I guess if you want to get into the concept of um, the problems of artificial intelligence, that might be it that in one of the stories, it's a bolo that doesn't know when to quit. Um, and it's very difficult to make it understand what's going on. It's kind of reverting back to programming, and it's powerful enough that it's just very difficult to stop. These things are like forces of nature. The bigger overarching theme, and I think this is the reason to maybe read these, especially, actually, if you're not really into military sci-fi, is I think it gives a unique look into the mindset um, of well, what you might call the old soldier. Because a the theme that runs through all of these, including the courier story, although in there the theme is taken up in a somewhat lighter way uh, by a human character in the story, is the soldier who's been put out to pasture um, after he has served his purpose. Now, to an extent, you can understand that. These are machines. They're not given the same 
um, consideration that a human being would be. But the human beings aren't necessarily given a lot of consideration either. You've served. We're thankful, technically. Now go away. And we don't have anything. We don't, we don't need you anymore. We don't need your skills anymore. And you see that running through, both with human characters and the bolos, of, of that kind of attitude. And I think that maybe was at the heart of these stories and what Laumer was telling us was, um, to some degree, how that feels to, to men and obviously women. Uh, obviously, in his time, you didn't have as many women who would have been in the kind of frontline service in combat duty, but you do now. And it's that sort of attitude, and we certainly saw that post-Vietnam War, of like, okay, we're, we're done with you now. Go away. We don't, we don't need to think about you. So in a couple of the stories, we have uh, bolos that are sort of museum pieces on kind of backwater worlds. They've been generally decommissioned, but they're not entirely gone. And they're kind of looked at as oddities and nobody really cares much. Um, but when it comes down to it and they're needed, they rise up and they serve once again and prove to be very difficult to destroy, um, even <laughs> by the humans who they're saving. One of the stories kind of details in a more, it's sort of a timeline of the creation of one of the really powerful bolos, uh, who, who's nicknamed, if memory serves, Caesar. Um, and its efforts reaching out with this incredibly powerful supercomputer mind it has, detecting a danger the human beings are unaware of, and then proceeding to deal with it, all the while making many human beings very nervous, and eventually making the, the, the human power structure on this sort of Earth that is essentially like an American empire um, want to destroy it because they're they're convinced this thing is trying to to take over, um, and the satisfaction this robot has with accomplishing its mission, not caring how it's been treated, and, and you know, and then waiting for the next danger. Um. And so I, I think that's kind of the deeper theme, and that's why these are interesting to me, is sort of look at something through the eyes of somebody that you're not. And maybe for some people, somebody you're not particularly um, uh, sympathetic to. Kind of see how they feel, and, and then to see how, you know, folks that you kind of think, eh, we don't need these people, they're not useful anymore. Maybe more useful than you think. That that... that Peace that has been achieved is at best always a temporary peace. Everything's a cycle. I mean, get down to planet Earth. We go through times of of extraordinary, you know, high temperatures on the planet into ice ages that last for millennia. We're in the middle of an ice age right now. We're just in a warm period. Um, but it's always moving and, you know, Whatever state you're in at the moment is not the state you're going to be in forever. And human beings, unfortunately, have a, have a tendency to assume that what I'm dealing with now is what I'm always going to be dealing with. For good and bad. Things are good. People think, ah, what can go wrong? Everything's fine. We don't have to prepare. We don't have to be ready. But also when people are going through really hard times, they oftentimes can't imagine that things are ever going to get better, which can lead them into very dark places. Uh, and, and, and that's an element of these books of sort of, in these cases, the war's over. We don't need these machines anymore. Um, but the peace isn't necessarily going to last and you might need them once again. And I think it's, it's particularly sympathetic to the soldiers because it, it does primarily take the attitude of, of the person who's been sort of looked down upon rising up once again to do their duty and to do it well. So interesting stories. And I, I, I'm a fan of Laumer's writing. I think he writes well. Um, the first half of Rogue Bolo, 
I don't love it because of the timeline style that it's written in, although it's an interesting scenario. I, I think I would have enjoyed it more as an actual novel. The second half is, um, is much better and seems to be an expansion of an idea of one of the, the earlier short stories. But as a group, well worth reading, uh, well worth thinking about, um, and a lot of good elements. And, and he does a nice job of the, um, of the mindset of these robots and how they think and how they come to, you know, to deciding on what they're going to do and then being able to see it through. Oh, I usually do. Um, I usually do a bit of reading from the actual books. So, um, I thought I would read a little bit from the beginning of combat unit, the first Bolo story. So you can get a little bit of a taste of it. Um, I'll just do maybe two or three of the first paragraphs of the story. So it's not going to, you know, ruin anything for you. So, From Combat Unit 1960 by Keith Lammer. I do not like it. It has the appearance of a trap, but the order has been given. I enter the room and the valve closes behind me. I inspect my surroundings. I am in a chamber. 40.81 40.81 meters long, 10.35 meters wide, 4.12 high, with no openings except the one through which I entered. It is floored and walled with 5 centimeter armor of flint steel, and beyond that there are 10 centimeters of lead. Massive apparatus is folded and coiled in mountings around the room. Power is flowing in heavy bus bars. Beyond the shielding, I am sluggish for want of power. My examination of the room has taken 0.8 seconds. Now I detect movement in a heavy jointed arm mounted above me. It begins to rotate, unfold. I assume that I will be attacked and decide to file a situation report. I have difficulty in concentrating my attention. I pull back back receptivity from my external sensing circuits, set my bearing locks, and switch over to my introspection complex. All is dark and hazy. I seem to remember when it was like a great cavern glittering with bright lights of transvisual colors. It is different now. I grope my way in gloom, feeling along numbed circuits, test pulsing cautiously until I feel contact with my transmitting unit. I have not used it since I cannot remember. My memory banks lie black and inert. Command unit, I transmit. Combat unit requests permission to file VSR. I wait. Receptors alert. I do not like waiting blindly. For the quarter second my sluggish action reaction cycle requires... I wish that my brigade comrades were at my side. So that is from the mind of one of these fantastic Bolo war machines. As it sort of, through the gloom, through the darkness, tries to figure out what is going on and how it should react. So the complete Bolo, Keith Laumer, this was published in 1990. Um, again, the earliest, it's, it's, it's a reprint of stories. The earliest, or the latest of them being from 1986, the earliest from 1960. Um, from a very interesting author, one that I enjoy quite a bit. And I think they're a very interesting look at um, ostensibly artificially intelligent giant robot tanks. But more importantly, a point of view of the veteran who has lived through the war and is now existing in a time of peace and um, how they're perhaps devalued and shunted aside, um, but being able to show their true value when the peace proves to be uh, not everlasting. So there you go, folks. Complete Bolo. I do suggest this book. I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoy anything. I, I enjoy, I've enjoyed everything I've read from Keith Laumer. Um, always interesting stuff and worth taking a look at. And and the themes I'm talking about here, I think you can find, along with themes of the stupidity of bureaucracy and bureaucrats, and that bureaucrats, regardless of their position, are not so much dedicated to what their mission should be, but dedicated to um, advancement and covering their asses. And you're going to find that through much of what he's written. If that, if that speaks to you, 
you definitely want to give these a read. And if it seems a little alien to you, you might want to give these a read and sort of see how other people think about things. Well, we'll leave it there. Relatively quick review today. Keith Laumer's The Complete Bolo. God bless everybody out there. Try to be kind to one another. Try to have some fun. Let me know if you've read these books, what you think of them. If you read Keith Laumer, what you think of them. Um, anything like that. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And until then, oh, I'll say leave them in the comments. Um, but until next time, next time I see you in Dad's Den of Pop Culture, be well. God bless everybody.